Christianity was the white man's religion and Islam was for people of color. Well, that's what Derek Greer believed as a college student. Now, 30 years later, he's leading one of the fastest growing churches in the nation. So what changed? You're about to find out. Derek Greer, founding pastor of Grace Church, one of the fastest growing ministries in the nation, wanted to know why God seemed to stop and pay attention to some while bypassing others. You know, I have two boys. And, uh, you know, sometimes we put them in the crib when they were little and they cry. We ignore them <laughs> and they'll stop crying. But then you hear that cry, <laughs> that you'll go through a wall to get to your child. And what I'm talking about in this book is that cry that causes God to stop everything he's doing, if you will, to make sure he tends to his child. In his book, When God Stops, Pastor Greer shares personal details from his journey of faith from Islam to Christianity. He also examines eight people in the Bible that got the Lord's undivided attention and how God also wants to stop for you. Well, Derek Greer is with us now and we welcome you to the 700 Club. It's great to have great you Great to be with here. you, Terry. When you were a teen, you were begging God to reveal himself. Some of it was just looking around like we all do sure. at the injustice in the world sure. and some of the stuff you just can't explain. Sure. What was it that was going on in your heart and in your life then? Great question. In the 70s, you know, integration was new. Yeah. And uh, I was part of that generation that was integrating. And uh, in the, you know, I grew up in New Jersey and New York. And um, there was tensions yeah. and uh, it was us versus them. And uh, there was often fist fights and uh, all, all the rest. So I, I grew up with a dynamic, you know, that uh, they are they, we are us. And um, by the time I went to uh, college, I went to Howard University in Washington, DC. I, I you know, th those ideas had kind of been cemented. And um, by the way, I wasn't, I did not become a Muslim. Um, I was leaning toward Islam. Um, so what yeah. was it that attracted you yes. to Islam? I'm curious. Well, um, I, I re the, the autobiography of Malcolm X really impacted me. Mm. Also, um, I, I, I like the message of self-determination, self-help. Um, you know, hey, folks, we, we need to not wait for the government to fix this. We need yes, to fix our own ship. issues. Yeah. Yes, yes. Exactly. So that was extremely attractive yeah. to me. So when I went to college, um, often in front of the student uh, center, you'd have uh, members of the Nation of Islam preaching, and they would call Christians handkerchief heads and uh, uh, Uncle Toms, and they would say that Christianity was a white man's religion. And uh, on some level, you know, I, 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 I thought, you know what, there's probably a lot of truth to that, because if we weren't Christians, perhaps we would have rose up in slavery and, and threw off the shackles. Uh, so I, I read the Quran, and actually, Louis Farrakhan at that time was a frequent um, uh, lecturer at Speaker. the school. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, he was there at least every year. And uh, I, I read the Quran for myself, and I was planning to actually uh, go to a mosque for the first time. I'm not from a Christian family, a Christian home. Uh, so you were wide open wide to whatever open. was coming yeah, your way. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So uh, after reading the Quran, I said, well, okay, uh, maybe there's some truth here. Um, but before I went to the mosque, I was in a class in Douglas Hall at Howard University, and uh, I was sitting in class, and I started to feel something I couldn't quite explain. Um, I felt disconnected. I, I felt sin. Settled, really? Yeah. yeah. I, I had no categories in my mind for conviction, but I just knew that something's not right with me. That you know, I, I'm, I'm on the wrong path. So I, I left class. Somehow I got through the class. I said, let, let me do this. Um, if I'm having a mental breakdown, again, there's no categories for conviction in my mind. I'm going to go do this in private. So I went back to my dorm downtown and I laid in the bed, you know, just like a Friday night. Say, I'll sleep this off and I'll wake up. I'll be better. Tomorrow I'll be normal. Right. So uh, it just intensified. And before long, I moved from the bed to the floor. And while I was sitting there on the floor, just feeling this, this disconnected with a sense of lostness. I think mm -hmm. that would, I, I felt lost. And again, I, I had uh, uh, friends, girlfriends, money in my pocket. Life was good. What's wrong with me? What, what's my problem? So uh, while I'm sitting there, I see this man in a gown, and all he says is, this is it. And I felt what the presence of God. Well, I was amazed at the whole experience up to this point. Um, 
but I felt a presence that I felt once as a child. I talk about that in the book mm -hmm. uh, at summer camp. This is why it's important to get the gospel into kids because even if they don't respond at that moment, there is a future point, yeah. yeah, that they could respond to. So for about a year, I studied the gospels and uh, Jesus just came alive from those pages. It wasn't his miracles. Um, what I think captured me about the Christ was his character. Yeah. This guy spoke to storms and the storm stopped. He, but you say in the book, and I, I understand this, yes. that you, you know, who cannot be impressed with the power of the miracles and the message and the love and all yes. of that, but you couldn't deal with the cross. No. Because that was weakness yes. to you. Yes. How did God grab your heart and say that was for you? Absolutely. <laughs> it finally dawned on me. It, it took a while, but as I watched this Jesus um, handle life situations, opposition, he became a secret hero. And I, I didn't believe he was more than a man, but eventually that very cross, because how could a strong, powerful God die on the cross? It made no sense to me. But then I finally realized the only reason such a strong person could die is because he was not one of us. Yeah. Because he was more than just a man, because a normal man would not have forgiven him from the cross. He would have said a whole lot of other things from the yeah. cross. But uh, I, I, it dawned on me, Jesus is the Christ. And uh, then I walked down the uh, chapel aisles at Howard University and gave my life to Jesus. And the book you've written, When God Stops, Faith That Gets God's Attention, is such an important message for all of yes. us. I mean, God stopped you in that dorm room, sure but it was a process after Absolutely. that of evolving into relationship with him. Absolutely. In here, you, you look at eight biblical characters mm -hmm. who got Jesus to stop Absolutely. in the midst of things and see them. And he is Jehovah Rohi. So what, what do we all need to glean from this? First, we have to understand God's immutable, meaning he never changes. So what these characters did, if we do the same thing, we'll get the same results. This book is all about getting results. There were thousands and thousands of people that wanted Jesus' attention. But the Bible highlights folks that actually caused Jesus to stop. And in it, we have uh, blind Bartimaeus. Actually, Jesus was on the way to the cross. He stops on the way to the cross for Bartimaeus. Uh, the one with the issue of blood, he was on the way to Jairus' house. He stops. Uh, Zacchaeus, he stopped and stayed at Zacchaeus' house. On and on. These characters, the reason that their narratives are recorded in the Bible is because Christ wants to stop for us. He wants to give us results. So the book is all about getting God results, becoming a God stopper, if you will, uh, in your life. It's, it's a wonderful book. I, I couldn't put it down. It was a great message. Really, all of us should read it to reinforce that he is the God who sees us yes. and he calls us to action yes. in that role. So thank you so much for what you've written here. Uh, wonderful that your church is growing the way that it is. That's, I can understand why. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> for more with Derek Greer, get his book. It's called When God Stops, Faith That Gets God's Attention. And you can pick up a copy nationwide. He's also going to be the featured speaker in our chapel service want to remind you, you can stream that event by going to cbn.com at noon today. It'll be a treat for you. So join us. Thank you so much. Great to have you here. Thank you so much.